Hey guys, David here from Vivian Guitar, back with Lick of the Week. I'm demonstrating a riff for you this week, and it's a riff in a progressive metal style, borderline gen style, with some of the rhythms that we're looking at. And it's quite a technical piece with some advanced uh, tapping techniques and legato techniques, which is why I'm sat in a more classical style position. Let's start breaking it down in some more detail. Okay, so breaking this riff down in a little bit more detail. The first thing to mention with this riff is the rhythm and the syncopation that happens throughout, uh, particularly in the first half, the kind of that kind of thing. Now, for this kind of riff, you might want to try and break down the individual beats and subdivisions of the bar to try and figure it out, but that can be quite challenging. So an alternative approach that I would suggest is just trying to learn this kind of rhythm by feel. Um, or also what you can do is that you can listen to the backing track because in this type of music, progressive metal, quite often the kick drum is going to be mirroring almost exactly what the riff does in terms of rhythm. So listen to that kick drum in the backing track and really try and lock into that because that's something that can really help you get the feel of it and, and learn this kind of riff by feel. Uh, another thing to note about the riff is that we have quite a few odd time signature changes. So the main theme, this kind of... That kind of thing, that repeats three times and each time we add an extra beat to the second bar. So the first time we've got a bar 4-4, four, four, then a bar 4-4, four, four, then it's 4-4 four, four, and then 5-4 four, four, and 4-4 four, four, and then 6-4. So just be careful of that and just be aware that each time we're kind of elongating that riff and adding a few extra rhythms to it. Then we come to this tapping sequence. <laughs> Now, technically, we're using a Phrygian dominant scale, which is the fifth mode of the harmonic minor scale. But essentially, what we're doing is we're playing the open sixth string, hammering onto the first fret, then to the fourth, then tapping onto the twelfth fret on the same string, and then we flow that all the way back down in the same way. Then we do the same thing back up again, but tap on the 10th fret instead. And then we're just playing two notes on the 7th and the 8th uh, fret. And that's the tapping sequence. It does seem quite tricky at first, but it's, it's not actually that difficult once you get used to the pattern. Uh, one thing I would suggest is make sure that your left hand is muting the uh, upper strings, the high strings, so that you're not getting any unwanted noise sort of muddying up what you're playing. So then we come to the sort of uh, legato section or, or the breakdown section where we do this. If I play it right. That's quite straightforward. We've got some kind of uh, syncopation again, but again, listen to that kick drum and you'll be quite easily able to lock into that rhythm. Then we come to the legato section. Again, this is fairly straightforward in terms of the pattern. We're not doing anything too complicated. Um, one thing I'd, I'd suggest for this is when you, if you're new to legato especially, make sure that you're practicing it really slowly and that you're trying to get each note ringing out nice and clearly. So make sure every note is, is coming out nice and clear before you start trying to do the whole thing up to speed. Then we kind of finish the riff off with this nice well, depending on your taste, nice semitone kind of jar and clash. Uh, it's a nice little bit of dissonance that kind of adds a bit of suspense. Um, and then to finish the whole thing off, we just play an augmented fifth chord on E. And use the volume control to rapidly fade it in and out until it fades out completely. Just again, adds a nice bit of suspense because it's quite a dissonant riff this. It's quite a uh, sort of demonic you could kind of say so um, doing that kind of chord at the end just just finishes off quite nicely so let's play through this riff a little bit slower
and we'll play it through one more time at the full speed so you can hear it again. chord should technically sound like this. So make sure you get it right. So that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Tune in next week for another Lick of the Week. Yeah.